Hi, my name is Michael Hampton, lead game designer on Assassin's Creed Rogue, and I'm very happy to take you through this first demo of our game. Our hero, Shay, is an assassin turned Templar who vows to bring down the assassins in North America across three major locations, New York City, the American River Valley, and here, in the North Atlantic Ocean, along the coasts of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland in the south of Canada. This naval battlefield was at the heart of the conflict between Britain and France during the Seven Years' War in the 18th century, and the outcome would determine the fate of the American colonies. As a Templar, you'll have many opportunities to aid the British cause against the French, joined at times by memorable characters from past Assassin's Creed titles, like Haytham Kenway, who you can see here on the left. In AC Rogue, you'll experience new and improved naval gameplay. Templars have access to almost unlimited wealth. So as the captain of a Templar ship, the Morrigan, you benefit from the most advanced weaponry of the age. Up ahead, we can see a restricted zone with French military ships guarding it. Let's attack them now. For attacking at long range, we can use the mortar. Next, we can use one of our new Templar weapons, the carronades, which are front cannons that fire explosive shots, great for stunning fast enemy ships. You can also combine them with the ram, used to charge enemy ships at high speed and inflict massive damage to their hull. The Morrigan also has traditional weapons, like broadside cannons. Damaging enemy ships will expose weak points. Here, you can use the Puckle Gun, an early form of machine gun to destroy weak points in quick succession while free aiming. This ship is chasing us. In these situations, another new weapon, the burning oil, is the best way to get rid of them. As you can see, we leave a trail of fire behind our ship that will burn all of our pursuing enemies. The loot we have gained from this battle can be used to upgrade our ship at any time. But for now, let's continue to explore the open world. On the left, we can see one of many French military settlements that we can infiltrate. Each one you can take down will aid the British war effort, and will often unlock Templar missions for you to complete inside. We'll sail on to another location this time, the Sapphire Shipwreck, located further north in the Arctic. To get there, we'll have to break through an ice sheet that's blocking access to the area. Our ship is already equipped with an icebreaker ram, so we can cross through it easily. But this is an upgrade you'll have to gain through your progression in the story. Looks like we're under attack again. Actions you take in the world have consequences, this time in the form of a gang ship, recognizable by its brown sails and powerful ram. The gangs are allies of the assassins and will hunt you down when you have a high wanted level. The gang ship has managed to ram us. Once a gang ship has rammed you, the enemy boards your ship and you'll have to fight them off quickly to avoid losing too many crew members. One great way to do this is to use the smoke bomb to stun our enemies. This allows us to get a few quick kills in and gain the advantage. Here is their captain. Trained by assassins, he is highly skilled in combat and difficult to take down. Let's see if we can surprise him with the rope dart. Got him. With their captain dead, the enemy crew surrenders. Now, the ship is ours, and we have different options to choose from. This time, we'll add it to our fleet and promote one of our crew members to be the captain. We can now send the ship on missions to help the British in the war. While sailing, don't hesitate to destroy icebergs in your path. It can clear your way, but most of all, many have collectibles inside like Animus Fragments and Frozen Cargo. You can also use them as temporary cover during battles. In the distance, we can see some of the military activity which is found throughout the North Atlantic Ocean. 
In the war between the French and British, you can help the British by freeing their prisoners of war. You'll have to destroy two military ships escorting the prisoner of war ship without damaging it. Otherwise, the prisoners you're trying to save will be killed. But let's leave that for now and continue on our way. There is also a harpooning site nearby. There will be many opportunities in the North Atlantic world to harpoon whales and sharks. Hunting these animals will allow Shay to craft unique weapons and armor. Here is one of our new animals, the narwhal, which is typically found in this Arctic region. For now, let's continue to our initial objective, the frozen shipwreck. In the background, we can hear our crew singing. There's around 20 new shanties you can collect throughout the game, along with many of your old favorites from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. The weather in the open world is dynamic, and in the Arctic, you'll encounter random blizzards, which can seriously affect your line of sight, trigger rogue waves, and sometimes even tornadoes. Finally, we've arrived at our destination, the Sapphire Shipwreck. Let's dock there now. Frozen shipwrecks are full of valuable treasure, so they're really worth exploring. Let's head over there and check out the high point. You can also find hidden items, like the Templar armor. In order to access it, you'll have to collect Templar keys hidden throughout the game world. Here, we can see a polar bear. It's too far for us to reach now, but he is part of the unique wildlife which you can hunt in the Arctic. Okay, we made it. Now, let's have a look at the beautiful northern lights of the Arctic. We can spot a naval clash, another activity in the North Atlantic where we can help the British and gain valuable loot. We'll stop the demo here. We hope you enjoyed this brief glimpse into the exciting world of Assassin's Creed Rogue. Pre-order now to receive the Siege of Fort DeSalba mission and the Ultimate Hunter Pack. Pre-order now. Available November 11th, exclusively on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3.